So some of you have said, Paul, your office studio little thing is, is boring. <sighs> yeah, I'm just kind of a boring guy. And anyway, I, I, I've been away for a few days and when I came back on the plane, I thought, well, let's mix it up. Let's figure out a different way. So I thought what we would do is film videos in various parts of PS Audio. So this around here <coughs> is um, our sales area. You can't really see a whole lot. Um, and, and I thought, kind of as a nice twist, I brought Nipper. Um, that's the dog that I, I, I bought. And I showed it to you in one of my videos. But he's still wearing the Santa cap, and I'm gonna, Oh, they got it taped on here. Sorry about that. I'm going to take it off because, to be honest, Nipper in a Santa hat is, you know, it's embarrassing. Shouldn't put Nipper. That's my buddy. Nipper the RCA dog. Okay. So another thing somebody has asked on these videos, well, there's been a whole bunch of things. Um, some of them have been um, change the damn intro music. I, I've been through like three of them. I, you know, I'm going to try something different. You heard it here already. So we'll see how that goes. The other thing that people have said is, um, <clears throat> we know you're writing a book. We know the book is called Confessions of an Audiophile. And we also know that in that book, there are a whole bunch of stories. It, it's really a collection of stories, kind of how I got to, to uh, th this point in my life, how I, these stupid things here. I mean, most of our sales guys stand up at these desks and they type away and whatnot just gets in my way. Anyway, I thought maybe today I would just tell a story. And one of the stories that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm reminded of is, um, and I haven't decided if I'm going to put it in the book or not, but it was the time that I landed a 747 airplane at Hong Kong's Kai Tak Airport. Now, you might think, guy's a pilot? Nah. But I am an aviation buff, and, and I, I, I love planes. I've, I've flown, geez, I think I was, I, I, I flew one of the original 707s uh, as, as a passenger. And so, <coughs> boy, <coughs> morning crud. Um, I was a passenger on a 747 plane, and this was at a time when I traveled the world for Genesis speakers, Genesis Technologies, the company that Infinity founder Arnie Nudell and I started back in 1990. And it was during the short break I had from PS Audio. One of my jobs was to travel around the world and set up these big giant Gen 1 systems. Now, these were like the Infinity IRS that you have seen. I've got a video out there that, that'll show you what the IRS, which is our main system, but it, it was a more modern version of the Infinity IRS. And I traveled all over the world setting up these systems for people in their homes. I had just set up one in Japan. We left from Japan's Narita Airport. This was 1990. Oh gosh, five maybe? I I'm just gonna take a guess at it. Well before anything had happened at 9-11. And at that time, air travel was, was I, I don't even know if we had, um, certainly didn't have the TSA. Well, I don't remember. But anyway, it was easy to get in and out of airports, in and out of planes. And in those days, the pilots would open the cabin door and they would stroll around and say hi to the passengers which was kind of cool. So I'm on this flight from Narita, it's about, I think it was four or five hours, to Kai Tak in Hong Kong. Now Kai Tak, I gotta tell you a little something about Kai Tak. It's no longer there. If you fly into Hong Kong today, it's boring. Same, you know, in it goes. But, I think it's on Lantau Island or something, but in those days, Kai Tak was right in the middle of, of downtown uh, Kowloon. Uh, 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 sort of the mainland around the, 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 the island they call Central, which, which is Hong Kong Island. And back then, it was right smack dab in the middle of the city. And so what they would do, the pilots would come in, and I've, I had only seen this uh, from a passenger standpoint. 
But you're in the plane, and <clears throat> I knew that what they did is they flew straight into a mountain, and they had a big plus on it, which is uh, like a target. And they, and they did this, they, they didn't do this any other way, not by computer. It was all done by hand. And I talked to a few pilots about it. One of the toughest landings in all of commercial uh, airline history. And during that time, the, uh, uh, the, the plane, anyway, so the, the, the planes would come in, they'd fly straight into this, into this um, uh, mountain and then make this sharp right-hand turn. And, and as a passenger, you're looking down at some guy's laundry sitting on top of his house. You know, and on the on the roof, and you're pretty close. And then they straighten out, and they come in, and they and they land. It's a very exciting. I loved it. I, I just thought that was great. <clears throat> and I'd always wanted to, you know, what would it be like in the cockpit, right? So here I am. I'm traveling uh, from Narita to Hong Kong, and. The captain's, I'm upstairs in the 747, and the captain's strolling around saying hi to everybody, and I got a wild hair up my ass and said, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I asked him not. You got a picture of this guy. He, he's tall. I'm, I'm, I'm on Cathay Pacific. This guy's tall, bald, looks like Jean Luc Picard, you know, from the Enterprise. And he walks down, and I look, and he says, you know, how you doing, sir? And I said, ah, I'm great. And I said, can I ask a favor? Sure. I said, would you? consider letting me watch you land this thing? And he looked at me, and he looked over at my uh, companion in the seat, which happened to have been Stephen Taylor, the, the president of um, Acoustic Energy. Um, I think it was AES. They, they made um, uh, loudspeakers from, in England. And he said, well, you know this person? And Stephen Taylor looked over at me, and he goes, yeah, I know him. And he goes, you think he's all right? And he goes, yeah, he's okay. And he said, yeah, sure. And Stephen Taylor's eyes went like that. And he said, I suppose your friend wants to go too. Uh, and Stephen was. <laughs> so he said, all right, I'll have the stewardess. That's what they called him back then. Sorry, flight attendants. I'll have the stewardess come get you. So I couldn't even sleep. I mean, I waited two or three hours till <clears throat> about an hour before the the plane um, stopped, uh, you know, was going to land. She woke us up and said, the captain would like to see you. So we walked into this 747 cockpit. And um, it, I'd never been in except just to poke my head in. And it's a four-seater. So you've got two seats up in front. Of course, the pilot on the left side and on the right side, the co-pilot. Now behind them, there are these two seats called jump seats. One of them is electric, and it kind of went out and <clears throat> rose up high, and then it looked down, uh, you know, in that, and that. That's the seat I got. Stephen had, because he yeah, asked second, got the seat, and he was kind of looking over behind the, the captain. We got in there, went through the safety procedures. <clears throat> I didn't know, but at the time, but... <clears throat> I didn't know, but at the time... I, I was shown that the escape route for the pilots, it, it's, it's like on these big fire hoses and you pop the window out, grab hold of one of these fire hoses on a big reel and it, it just pulls, you know, you just jump out of this two-story airplane and down onto the ground. Anyway, so we sat up there and that was the most exciting thing I'd ever seen. And uh, he explained everything and then we could see, you know, as he's, as he's pulling in, coming down, flying straight towards that mountain. And I gotta tell you, I have never been frightened flying. I was frightened. I didn't wanna say a, a blinking word. He, he had sweat on the back of his head and he's pulling this thing in. The co-pilots, he kept you know, telling him to change the speed, change the flaps, and he's flying this thing in. Hard right rudder, <clears throat> pull down <clears throat> into, into Kytac. And, and that was, Stephen and I just gave each other high five. I mean, that was the coolest thing I think I'd ever done. And um, I'm glad I had a chance to share it with you. Thank you for watching. Bye.